Today, we'll hear from Elise about her quick mother-daughter August trip. That's on this episode 373 of Dirty Dirty Prep to Go. Hello and welcome to WWE Prep to Go, where we talk strategy and ideas for people planning their Disney World trips. I am your host, Shannon Albert from WDWPrepSchool.com. Thank you for being here for episode 373. So today we have another trip report. This one was from Elise, who just returned from a quick mother-daughter trip. And I really love talking to her because it was a perfect example of pivoting, but also of fitting in special things. Her daughter happens to have celiac disease. And so anything with like special diets is always interesting to me because it gives people to have a sort of normal chance to do things like have churros at Walt Disney World. So I'll have my chats with Elise here in just a moment. As always, a reminder to follow on social media, search WDW Prep School on all the platforms. We go live once a week on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. We do Q&As on Instagram and Facebook. We post news on every single channel, so pick the platform of your choice. We have information there. We're just content machines putting it out on all the platforms, including this one with podcasts. I think that is all of the housekeeping. Without any further ado, here are my chats with Elise. Welcome to the podcast, Elise. Hi, I'm excited to be here. We are talking on Tuesday, August 15th, and I understand that you are heading to Disney World. What are your trip dates? So we leave in exactly one week on Tuesday, August 22nd. And then until when? Until just Friday, August 25th. A quick trip. All right. And how did you choose these dates? So I chose these dates. So it's just going to be me and my daughter going on this trip. She just turned seven years old. Her name's Rosemary. And I was just looking at resort rates as one does. And this time of year just had a lot of really good deals and thought it would be a good time for a really quick turnaround trip. It's the week before she starts back to school. And I was also looking for an excuse basically to get to Disney World to enjoy some of the dining with her. So I guess to maybe just back up a little bit, we have been to Disney World before. We've been lucky in the past couple of years to be able to go a few times But this is going to be our first time going since she was diagnosed with celiac disease. And I guess just briefly, because I don't know how familiar folks are. I was only vaguely before she was diagnosed. But celiacs in autoimmune disease, where the body, you have an immune response to eating gluten. Mm -hmm. And gluten is protein that's in wheat, barley and rye. And currently, the only treatment for that is just a strict gluten-free diet. So pasta bread, baked goods, that sort of thing. And it's been an adjustment, but definitely pretty easy to do at home and and cooking at home. But going out and traveling is really tricky. And so having heard on this podcast and reading other places how great Disney is with food allergies and accommodations and just being accessible and safe, I think we're both just really looking forward to some stress-free treats that are hard to find other places. And there are lots of people on your boat, as you've heard on this podcast before. So it always makes me happy that you can go and feel normal and eat in restaurants and do all that kind of stuff. So I'll be interested to hear where you're choosing to eat and when you come back, what your experiences were with that. Okay, so you've got a short trip with Rosemary, August 22nd to the 25th. Have you been looking at the forecast? Yeah. So when I booked this trip in the spring and our summer, we're in southeastern Virginia and we had a kind of the summer started later. We had a beautiful spring and I was like, oh, it's going to be hot. It's supposed to be hot in Florida. We'll be in the pool. And we've been having really intense heat wave right now with heat index 109, 110, I think 112 today. Yeah, it's getting real. But we've we've got some plans to try to just, we're going to take it easy and and go with the flow and have our cooling towels and UV umbrella and indoor plans. And we're not fast tours, I should say. We're pretty laid back. So I'm hoping that just works in our advantage. A couple members of my team are there right now because they've been doing the Halloween parties and everything. And it is hot. They can confirm. But they also said the parks are 
almost dead. So they said if you can get up early and you can get in the parks before it gets super, super hot, you can get through a lot really quickly yeah. before, you know, it reaches 100 degrees or whatever it's been there. So I guess that's the good news. And this time of year is pretty predictably low crowds. Yeah. So pros and cons. Definitely. Can you tell us how on the 22nd you are getting to Orlando? Yeah, so we're flying this time and we have not flown to Orlando before. We've, we've flown before, but we've always road tripped it to get to Disney in the past. At first, when we first started going, it was it was always in the after times. So our first trip had been planned in 2020 and got pushed forward, of course. And so it still wasn't a still distance character meets and all that. And we just weren't quite comfortable flying. And then it was just easy as far as like bringing stuff and that sort of thing. But where this is such a quick trip, I just didn't want to spend that much time on either end in the car or do that big drive and then turn around and have to do another big drive. So yeah, we're flying in and our plane lands at MCO at 1.30, which is nice. It gives us some time. Okay. And from there, how are you getting to Disney World? We are going to use Away We Go transportation. I had originally looked at doing the mirrors or the buses. And I just, since it's such a short trip, so much of this is going to be about like maximizing our time. I just don't want to spend a lot of time getting to or from or, or waiting in lines. And the and then I was thinking about just getting an Uber, but there was the booster car seat question. And technically in Florida, Rosemary can just ride in the car. And so I thought about that. And then I was like, oh, is it really worth it? And so, yeah, so we went with Away They Go and yeah, we'll see how that goes. And where are you staying during your trip? We're staying in All-Star Sports, which is our first time at that resort. It's actually our first time at any of the All-Stars or Values. And again, just a quick trip. We wanted to be a little bit more budget conscious, but it looks super cute. I'm really excited about it, actually. We're, we love the sensational six it is i always want to say the fab five and i'm like no it's not this it's not five of them yeah it looks this retro feel to it i think it's going to be super fun we requested the surfs up section we're in a preferred room i requested that through touring plans which has never worked for me but maybe fourth is the charm i also tried just a chat on my disney and asking for i want a room that's not pool facing but it's still in that section. Yeah, I, mean, I was going to say, booking a preferred room definitely narrows down where you, you're going to be. So that's the good news. But if you don't want to be on the pool side, that is a good request to make. So we'll see. If it's not, that's fine. Hope, also hoping for a ground floor. We live in a third floor walk up now. So like it could be a little vacation from stairs for us, but we are certainly up for stairs. We're well practiced if, if we need to. <laughs> mm hmm yeah, I think you'll like it. It is super cute and colorful and fun. I especially think kids can enjoy it. Okay, so you're going to hop on a way to go transportation. And then what are the rest of your plans on Tuesday, August 22nd? We are going to go to the Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party, which I've never been to any of the parties before. When I originally was booking the strip, that was not at all in my thought process. So Rosemary just turned seven and I feel like we're really transitioning into the big kid years and changing how late she can stay up and that kind of stuff. And the more I thought about it, I was like, we're going to be there. We're getting in at 1.30. Like we can do this. And uh, yeah, I got a couple of tickets. So we're super excited for the party for sure. That is super fun. What are your like main goals? Is it rides or is it Halloween entertainment? Is it what is your focus there? Yeah, so rides in general are not a big goal for us. Right now, Rosemary just she doesn't care for the sensation of being really high or sudden drops. And who knows, that might change, that might not. But that's fine with me, who actually has some pretty bad motion sickness. So we're a good team in that way. We definitely want to catch the parade is a huge thing um, that we want to do. There's characters. We want to see the seven dwarves. We want to see Minnie and Mickey and Daisy and Donald and all of their Halloween garb. And there's also a bunch of rides that we haven't seen at night before. 
So I want to do the people over at night. I think Jungle Cruise at night could be fun. So there's things like that. The Haunted Mansion, for sure. Rosemary's actually going to dress as the bride from the Haunted Mansion with the veil. So I think that could be really fun. There's some great photo ops that you should take advantage of in that awesome costume. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So that would um, be fun. The only the big question I have is, She's not a big fan of fireworks right now. So we want to avoid that. And I think we're going to do Pirates of the Caribbean is going to be our technique for just getting over there during fireworks time. I'm not sure which parade we should do. Ideally, I would like to be at the front of the park so we could see the Max Goof power line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if it would be hard if we did the earlier parade if it would be hard to leave that area while people are lining up for fireworks to scoot over to Adventureland. And alternately, I don't know if it would be hard to get over there after the fireworks. I have two thoughts for you. Okay. One is we recommend looking at the weather the night of the party because it is a shame when rain shows up. Yeah. And that can really help inform which parade you need to go see because they can't do a full parade if it's dangerous. So I would maybe base your decision on the weather a little bit at least. And then the second thing is you could take the train. Ooh. So the train it's been open since we've ever been, so I forget about it. Yeah, it was closed for a long time. But if you are right there, you could hop on it and take it and bypass Main Street. Okay. That's why you do what you do. Listen, been almost 20 <laughs> years of, of planning trips. It comes in handy sometimes. Okay, okay. that sounds like a really fun first day and I'm excited for her in her big age of seven to get to do yeah. some of these some yeah. of these um more and grown up things like, the other thing for the party is that a lot of the party treats are not gluten-free like the special treats so we're definitely going to try to get in and eat something when we for, if hopefully we can get in close to four you know a lot depends on when the plane lands and mm -hmm. can we get into our room and then getting over there I'm definitely open to taking a lot of minivans this trip too. I think that's just something I'm budgeting in for our comfort and ease and getting places quickly. But I'm just so excited for her to be able to like, you can go to Pinocchio Village House, you can go to Columbia Harp, like you have all these choices of where you can go. You can pick what you want in the moment. And we haven't been able to do that for a little bit. So I'm excited. I have a couple more thoughts for you specific to what you just said. One is if she needs the allergy-friendly treats, if she yeah. wants to trick-or-treat like the other kids are, then they'll, they'll give you the tokens. But if you want to completely skip the trick-or-treat spots, you can go right to the allergy places and they'll let her have all of it at once. That's awesome. So you can literally walk into the allergy center and be like, here's your candy. I think that's the way to go because I've already told her I don't want to walk around with a backpack full of melted chocolate. Oh yeah. my <laughs> Yeah, I would get, yeah, go later in the night and then just do it yeah. all at once. And then yeah. they can tell you which things are safe for her. The other is with the seven dwarfs, um, somebody on my team just waited two hours and 20 minutes to go meet them the other day. There's no way at the end of the night. So if she can okay. wait, if she stays yeah. up, if she can last until after the second parade, then it's a walk on. But if not, you can line up as early as four, but they don't start meeting until 615. Yeah. The only yeah. good thing about that is you get it done before the party officially starts, but that's a really long time to sit. Long time. Yeah. No, yeah. waiting later. That sounds good. Yeah. It's yeah. Uh, either way, pros and cons, yeah. but they're really popular. So it's a competitive. Sure. Super cute. So yeah, yeah very cute. That's our competitive um, one. But we're not trying for Jack and Sally. Yeah. Oh, so she's not too interested. We like Nightmare Before Christmas well enough, but it's not a top favorite. So. Yeah. I feel like you can only pick like a couple of the longer ones. So I'm glad that kind of worked out. Oh, and we're hoping she's hoping to see Jasmine too. Okay. Which I think from what I understand might be a little tricky because it's the same line, but they swap out. It's Jasmine and mm -hmm. Jeannie and then Aladdin and Abu. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you be in line and then it's like, whoop, it's Aladdin. You can ask, you can ask the cast member who's next though. So if you're lining Aladdin. up, you make sure you're there for the right people. She so like, dope it out. And make that happen. Yeah. So that's fun. Yeah. What is, are you going to sleep in a little on Wednesday, August 23rd? Yes. So that is definitely the plan for that. So we actually have a, we have a 
character meal reservation at Keep Me Cafe at 855, which I guess is Disney sleeping in maybe a little bit. It was between that and there was a 1055 one. I just, I wasn't sure if we went to Keep Me Cafe for the character meal, if we'd want to pop into Epcot just to do a couple things and then back to swim and rest in the heat of the day. And I feel like if we did the 11 a.m. character breakfast, it would already be like into that afternoon hour and you wouldn't want to do that. So I think I'm going to stick with the nine o'clock. And I'm going to ask how you're getting there. Is it minivans? Yeah, we're going to take a minivan there for sure. Yeah. And then maybe just walk over to the international entrance to do Epcot or if we're feeling like super tired and we just want to swim. That's what we'll do. And then come back to Epcot in the evening. The only thing that's a little bit of a bummer is I think a lot of the characters in Epcot are really like out just during those afternoon hours. So I feel like Jasmine's a backup in Epcot. But so we might like that might be other thing. Like, okay, we sneak in after brunch to see those characters in the World Showcase and then walk back out. Maybe ride Frozen. But I am going to get Genie Plus this day too. And so I was going to I was going to ask you, you said rides weren't the most important thing for you, but you are getting Genie Plus. Yeah, I've even considered actually doing it on our arrival day for those few hours before the party starts. But I just feel like there's a lot of variables with what time we're actually going to get there. I'm not 100 percent that it's totally worth it, but definitely for the Epcot day, we're going to do Genie Plus. Sure. What are your must to use at Epcot? So at Epcot, it's we want to ride Frozen, the three caballeros. She wants to do the scavenger hunt for food and wine. The fry basket is one that she can go to for the food boost, which I'm super excited about because French fries are something that's actually really hard for her to get out just because fryers are usually shared. And she's not so sensitive that we have to worry about cross-contamination really too much, but Frying something in the same oil is kind of like a next level cross-contamination of that. My very scientific terms. I don't know. I went to art school, but <laughs> to avoid that. So we want to do that. And then there's a lot of stuff at the front of the park. Like we, we love a lot of the nerdy stuff. We love living with the land. She loves space of earth and all the stuff outside of that and the whole aquarium and yeah, and we've enjoyed all the fest. We've been able to go to Flower and Garden before and Festival of the Arts and really enjoyed all of that. She has a very mature palate. So like mm. she's into a lot of the food booths and stuff and trying that out. But we have a dine, we have a dinner reservation at Tempanito at seven. And we're going to go there for the first time, which is very exciting. She has never done I know it's not technically hibachi. And it, that's what it is. It's hibachi style. <laughs> it's the only place, it's the only hibachi restaurant I've ever been to that had female sh chefs. Whoa. The only one. It's one of my right. favorite things about it, in addition to yeah. it just being good food. Oh, and that reminds me actually that night, the the local band that plays during the week for their festival is an all-female like pop rock group that we definitely want to try to see. Or very really excited to see that. But yeah, the Tamanino, they have sushi and sashimi, which she's excited about. And just, I think the little show, yeah. it'll be fun. And from what I understand reading in like the gluten-free groups is that they would just prepare her food before everyone else's so that the griddle is safe. And I guess to backtrack a little too with the Kate May, the character breakfast, from what I understand is she won't do the buffet. They'll just bring her out mm -hmm. late of what she wants, which makes her feel like royalty as she should. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that's how that's handled. But I was excited to hear that she'll still be able to see hers cook on the, because that's the whole point of it. You don't really want your food to come from the back. Just like there. here. Yeah. Here you go. Everyone else is doing this. Yeah. But it should be yeah. fun. Yeah. And that is just going to really play it by ear as far as like how long we want to hang out there. And if we're where we end up at the end, if we're in the world showcase, then maybe we will just take a minivan back. But if we're, we are at the front, then we'll take the bus back. But I'm not going to puff it when it's 200,000 degrees from the world showcase to the front of the park just for the bus. 
<laughs> Although she is very excited about the buses. We're, she's a city kid, so she doesn't ride a bus to school. She walks. And mm. the first time we went to Disney, she was on the bus. And she's like, this is my first bus ride. And it was very exciting. So that's cute. That has its own draw. Yeah, you'll definitely get some bus time. Yeah, this trip. OK, so Thursday, August 24th. So originally we were going to do Epcot and Magic Kingdom were our, our two parks. But then when I got the Halloween party tickets, I, was, I feel like we're going to get a lot of Magic Kingdom stuff in, at least the big stuff that we really love. And so we've decided to do Animal Kingdom in the morning, which I'm super excited about. It's a park that her and I really love. It's not my husband's favorite. So it's good to just, since he's at home for this one, we can just enjoy it. I, so much of what I love about Disney is like the immersive theming and like feeling like you're in the world. And I just think Animal Kingdom does that the absolute best. So we're definitely planning to rope drop Animal Kingdom. We want to do, I've never made it to the Nemo show. We want to do that. We want to do the Lion King show. And a few is a little tough too, where it's like everything's in these like few hours that it's open a lot of the shows. We want to do that. I don't know. We've enjoyed going out on the train to Rafiki's Planet Watch and the animation experience, but I'm not sure if that'll fit in this time. We definitely need to do the Gorilla Trail because there's hippos and that's her all time favorite animal. And they're not at a lot of different zoos, so we have to go see them. So doing the trails, meeting Mickey and Minnie. Are you doing Genie Plus? I think so. I think so. I don't think that we really need it, but need it with the shows and stuff. But you know what? If it's five less minutes standing outside in the hot sun, like, I'll take that. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I like Genie Plus. I like how it gives you a little organization to the day. And also, we're planning to leave midday and go back to the resort and swim. I do Navi River Journey and I want to try eating at Suchuli Canteen. We've not eaten there before. And also I want to try, we've been to Nomad Lounge before, but they have gluten-free churros, which are really hard. Like you've not found anywhere else. So at the very least to get some cold drinks and some churros and sit there. We have a lot of food to eat at Animal Kingdom. So the other thing. It's a good food park. Such a good food. It's a good drink park. We love the, the spiced corn in Africa. That's like our favorite snack. So I'm just excited for that. We're just going to eat our way through the morning. Oh, and actually the first thing, what we'll probably rope drop in Animal Kingdom is the Creature Comforts, the Starbucks there. Supposedly they have gluten-free donuts. So we're going to check that out and try to find because she has not had a donut since her diagnosis. Hmm. We're going to check that out. Who knew? Yeah. I didn't realize. I know. Thank you. All right. Great Disney Facebook groups. I know. <laughs> this niche has so many sub niches. It's fascinating. Yeah. And you mentioned leaving midday and swimming. Is there anything that you're thinking you're going to do after that? Yeah, so we're going to go to Disney Springs in the afternoon. And that was definitely Rosemary's request. She likes it there. She's like the little town. We love the boathouse we've been before. And they just happen to also be very gluten-free friendly. She's a huge seafood fan. I am too. So she's going to go there and she's going to get her oysters and she's going to get her shrimp. And there's some good bakeries there. I think Erin McKinnis is all <laughs> gluten-free choices. And then just do our shopping. And that sort of fun stuff. And then head back to the room. And Friday, August 25th, I assume is your departure day. Do you have anything else planned on that day? Yes. Yeah, so our flight is at noon. And away we go it is picking us up at nine. But I am going to try to get over to the French Quarter for their gluten-free beignets that morning. And away we go. It's going to pick us up there. Oh, OK. Different spot. Yeah. Got it. We actually traveled. My husband's from New Orleans and we were there for Easter in the city and we could not find a gluten free beignet in all of New Orleans. So mm -hmm. we're going to Disney for them. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. And they're so good. Yeah. You don't have to tell us how the gluten free ones are, but the, <laughs> the regular with gluten ones are delicious. Yeah. 
Okay, that's fun that Away We Go is picking you up over there. Yeah. How are, and how are you getting to French Quarter? Probably a minivan. <laughs> <laughs> I think definitely for resort to resort, that's just the easiest. And whenever we drove to Disney, we, we parked the car and never got back in it the whole time we were there. I think one of the perks of Disney is that they have all the transportation. So I really enjoy that part of it too. Oh, something else I was considering during our Epcot day and back and forth is like hopping on the Skyliner and riding that and then maybe taking the bus from Hollywood Studios. This is a little bit play it by ear, this trip, a little bit more laid back. Like we have a rough outline of the things we want to do, but it's going to be a lot. See how we feel. And don't have pressure to move from one thing to the other. Like I really, if we're there and we're enjoying something, like let's do that and not rush, rush to the next thing. And we're really, we're very lucky that it's not our first time at Disney. It's probably not going to be our last. And so that's just a very privileged position to be in, to be able to do it that way. But I do enjoy it that way a little bit more. Yeah, I always say that I think the biggest perk to planning is that you can pivot. If you do want to go ride the Skyliner and they come back on the boat, you know how to do that. Yeah. Yeah. You have lots of options. Okay. And does Rosemary want to share anything before we wrap up the pre-trip? Yeah, definitely. You want to come on over? Hey, sweetheart. Hi, Rosemary. <laughs> your mom is just telling me all about your trip. What are you most excited about? Uh, I'm most excited for the Halloween party. Oh, that's going to be so fun. Are you going to be able to stay up late enough? I think you, so. You are? You Midnight? Yeah. <laughs> that means the night before your trip, you have to go to bed super early so you get all your sleep in before you get on the airplane. <laughs> yes. What are you wanting, What are you excited to do at the Halloween party? I decided to go on the Haunted Mansion. Now, oh, because you're going to be in a special costume. Yeah, and they're going to have, as far as I understand, they're going to have the, the ghosts out there that can talk to us, right? Yeah. Yes. That very cool. Just make sure you go at night because it's extra special when it gets dark during the Halloween party. And then you'll glow. <laughs> That's a double bonus then. So that'll be a good thing to do during the party. What about food? Are you excited about some of the food? I'm excited for the chill out. The churros. Yes. Good. Yeah, favorite yeah. Mexican place. And in Tempanito. Austin. Oh, and Tempanito. Yeah. Yeah, you have very grown-up tastes in food. So I'm excited for you to get to try all these things. And Rosemary's job is going to be to take photos of all the gluten-free food to share here and to share with other people because we've benefited a lot from other people's experiences. And we think it would help other people and especially a lot of other kids, right, that are going. That'll be, we will be happy to share it in the written version of this episode. All right. I hope you guys have a good time. And thanks for sharing, Elise and Rosemary. Definitely. Thank you so much, Shannon. We love your podcast so much. This is something that we listen to together all the time, right? She is my planning partner. We did it together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Okay. Have a good trip. We'll talk to you when you get back. Thank you. Bye. Welcome back from your trip, Elise. Thank you. Happy to be here. So we're talking on Thursday, August 31st, but your Disney World trip was August 22nd through the 25th. Mm -hmm. How are you doing? How did it go overall? It was great. I mean, we were super lucky with weather after seeing that the hurricane coming through and going at that time of year. I knew, of course, that was a possibility. So I just feel like we dodged a bullet there a little bit we feel oh. super lucky and yeah just right back at it rosemary's back at school two days later she started her first day of first grade and husband's a professor so he's been working and yeah just back to the real world back to the real world that's a rough transition sometimes so let's start talking through your trip to see how it went you told us that you were flying for virginia and you usually drive so how was the flight to orlando it was super smooth i felt i had gotten myself nervous about the flight because we were flying we flew spirit there and frontier back just because of the times that was the best thing and 
right before I left, I saw all these kind of horror stories on TikTok about them not like accepting your bag and the personal item has to really be just like a purse, not a full size backpack and that kind of stuff. So I ended up, we paid for two checked bags, which is actually cheaper with them than paying for a carry on. And then I did last minute also pay for a carry on because I was nervous that my bag wouldn't be considered a personal item. And then also I knew it'd be coming back with stuff. So I was like, I just did it for both flights to add a carry on, but I didn't really need to do that. So that was, I can learn and hopefully others can learn from my mistake. I don't, I, they really were not checking the bags that seriously at all, but it was great. We got in early. Let's see, we left Norfolk at 1120 was the flight and we were in Orlando at 115. So it was smooth. We have TSA pre-check, which is always wonderful. I would recommend that to anybody. Always. So anyone going in and out of Orlando or as particularly out of Orlando. Yeah, definitely. It was, yeah, leaving. That was really weird. Uh, Norfolk's a pretty small airport, but I fly to Boston to see my folks a lot in New Orleans for my husband's family and any larger airport at all. It's just mm-hmm. invaluable. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's fine with kids that you don't have to undo everything too. You can just walk through. That's really nice. A hundred percent. And especially those of us that travel with laptops, that's another layer. And the kids, yeah. you don't want to take your shoes off. And it's shoes. It's a whole thing. Why is the shoes part the worst? I don't know. It's a, yeah, because you're walking weird. around in your bare feet or your socks and it's just awkward. But okay, so you landed um, on time. And how was a way we go transportation to take you to your resort? They were awesome. So we we're actually we were 15 minutes early. We got our bags and then we were on their van at 1.30 to head to the resort. They were prompt. They texted. Easy peasy. It was super easy. It was wonderful. OK, so you got to All Star Sports in your preferred room. Was your room ready? Yes, it was. Right before, I guess, when we were getting our bags, I got the text from Disney that their room was ready. And we were in our room by 2 p.m. Just 30 minutes later. Are you serious? Yeah. Your flight landed at 1.15 and you were at your Disney in room at 2 room o'clock? At 2 o'clock. That it's, is... Oh, so it was unreal. Is that a new record? If anyone's listening and has done better than that, please let me know because I that's really incredible. It was really... It was amazing. And our room, we were so lucky. So I didn't get exactly what I asked for. I got, I guess, two out of the three. I asked for surf's up section not pool facing and ground floor and we were in the football section ground floor not pool facing and I'm so glad we were in the best location ever for the resort because it was like tucked it was 7116 for people that want to know exactly but that row it was like just off of where the pool is but so much quieter and but it was a straight shot to like the main building and the pool and all that and it was also on the other side of the football field that they have at all-star sports which is really fun but another loud congregating kids mm-hmm. playing place it and just like, back gets for people to yeah. run and play and scream just like a pool yeah and, and it was so cool i didn't realize like they provided balls and stuff that they put out there they did that in the pool too my kid was one of them like up at late mm-hmm. screaming outside of mm-hmm. people's hotel room i don't blame any anyone for doing it but it was then just like a few feet away. It was really quiet where we were. So that was nice. And it was nice anytime you're walking around Disney, so many steps to be on the ground floor is at the end of the night. It, it's nice. It, you didn't have much time at the hotel because you were headed to the Halloween party. Yeah. So we got, let's see what time, by three o'clock, we were in a minivan for the party. So in that hour, we got unpacked got changed, called the van, and off we were. And we got into the party just a couple minutes before four. We got dropped off earlier. We got in the big line outside of Magic Kingdom. But like two minutes after four, we had our bands on and we were in. I will say that line to get in can be very hot. There's no shade. So I was very glad. Did I have the umbrella? Yes, I had the shade umbrella then. And so that was that was very nice. So... You said at three o'clock you took a minivan. So when you got to Magic Kingdom and you were in that line, how many people were in front of you waiting to get in? 
not it looked a lot, but there was a lot of people behind us too. Mm -hmm. And then they sectioned us off because people were streaming out. So they would make these like, the, so the seas could part and the people leaving the parks to come out. And so you'd stand in one section, they'd move your group up to the next and then to the next. I will say when we went to this to get our bands after we got through just like the ticketing and stuff, I didn't realize they had all these people lined up for bands, but then there was another row of cast members behind them as well. And we should have just, we were fine with time, but it clogged up right there because I don't think anyone realized like, oh, you can go ahead, go further. And there's more people giving out the band. So just that's something folks can look for. A couple of minutes after four, you are through the tap styles. You've got your party band. What's your first priority? Our very first thing we did was went to the, the Cheshire Cafe for a cold drink mm -hmm. because we had been on the go at that point. Like everything worked out time-wise. But looking back and as we get into the party, I'm not sure. It was great that we could squeeze it in financially and just how our plans went. But I do wish we had like more of a down day before the party because towards the end, we were a little bit, a little beat. Because the travel day is still, even though you're sitting on the plane or sitting in the airport, it's still, I don't know, draining in its own way. So our first stop was at the Cheshire Cafe. And Rosemary got one of her favorite snacks of the whole trip, which was the Queen of Hearts slushy. And she loved that. And I got the Witch's Cold Brew. And we just sat by the teacups for a minute. And oh, my God, we made it. We're mm -hmm. here. And I, I love that area. It's so pretty. I don't go on the teacups because that's a little too much spinning for me. But I think it's with the lanterns and stuff. It's so pretty over there. Mm -hmm. and, so we just enjoyed those drinks. And I had brought for her a reusable straw because there's a lot of, I'd heard a lot of chatter online about straws potentially having gluten in them because as a binder that they might use flour. And so I brought the straw, but she was getting like slushies and milkshakes. So there's really only so much washing it out that you can do in the park. And then so I was like, I don't know, this I cannot continue doing this. So at a certain point later, I Googled about the straws. I was like, is this really true? And I asked a cast member too. And he came to find out that the straws from Disney, whoever supplies them, that they're 100% paper, but that some of the straws by companies that aren't Disney owned, they might be. And I know that sometimes tricky. I know some of the restaurants, what's Disney and what's not, but I, that's definitely not something that's super clear. So I don't know. That's what I'm at. At Magic Kingdom, at least, you can be pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. So when we went to Epcot, I was like, but there I gave up on the reusable straw situation. Yeah, but we had those drinks. Oh, and the other thing I had done is I got Genie Plus that morning and started stacking things. And I got Genie Plus. I ended, I ended up getting it for the whole trip. This was the only day I would say it was worth it that I did it. I, that's interesting because you only got to use it for a couple hours. Only a couple hours, but I felt that those couple hours, it was a little chaotic in the park because it definitely felt like there was all the people like there for the party and woof, we're here, we're getting started. And then there was all the people leaving. It's going to shut down and I have to do my last things. And people just seemed a little stressed out. Mm -hmm. The vibe seemed a little stressed and everyone was trying to do stuff. So I was really glad that we had Genie Plus and we fit in. So originally I had gotten. And these are not rides that not all of them have super long lines. But when you it's only two hours, because really the other thing is it's only till six, not till seven, because between six and seven, everything kind of shuts down and you're just waiting. So we had Small World, Peter Pan, Enchanted Tales with Belle and to meet Ariel. So we walked over and Small World was down. It's like, OK, no worries. We did Peter Pan. And then we went and did Enchanted Tales with Belle. And that was the first time we had ever done that. Oh, my gosh. And that was a 45-minute wait if you didn't have Genie Plus when you walked up. Yeah. It, it's so slow. And yeah, you know. sure. That makes sense. So I was, then I was like, I'm glad we have this. And Peter Pan, too, always long. And that was a really nice way to start. It's just so traditional. Disney. Quintessential, <laughs> I should say. Quintessential Disney. Um. She loved Enchanted Tales with Belle. I think we we're both surprised. I don't know what 
I expected maybe just that bell would come out and she would tell a little story and the children would gather. But the fact that it was so interactive, she loved and actually made a friend there who was also on a trip, just her and her mom. And me and her mom sat together and the girls sat in front of us because they were both in it. So that was really sweet and fun. Then we went and met Ariel and that was fun. And then I just grabbed a lightning lane for the Ariel ride because I could. I don't know if that really took out any time, but I did it. Then we went and rode the carousel, which is one of Rosemary's favorites. So this is all we're running around and doing it. And then we went and got some ice water at Storybook Treats. And we're just like, because this day too, I was trying to pack a little lighter in the parks and especially for the party. I don't know. I just didn't want to be like weighed down with a ton of stuff. So I didn't bring our like giant water bottles and stuff. Like there's water there we need to we can buy it instead of lugging it around and so we got our water and then it was about six after that we chilled and had the water and then we decided to go over and get in line for Minnie and Donald and Daisy because there wasn't too much to do otherwise in that hour and I figured then we can just be first in line for that and knock it out we had Originally talked about doing the seven dwarves when we walked over that line was already extremely long. And I talked to Rosemary about it. And I know that she like she loves Minnie and like Donald and Daisy and all of them so much. And I think she wanted to do the seven dwarves because she heard it was like a rare thing to Mm -hmm. see them and was excited about that. But I was like, do you really want to see them or do you just want to see them because you don't get to see them a lot. And she was like, yeah, I I guess I don't want to see them that much. Because I was like, it might take a, we can do it. We can do anything you want, but it's going to mean this much more time in line. And no, that's really your favorite thing anyway. So we went with Minnie and Donald and Daisy and we were really, that was really hot. That was another time I was very happy to have the umbrella. And I guess the sun was starting to set. So it was almost like I had it to the side of us. It looked like I was like shielding, like we were celebrities or something. Don't Don't look at us. us. (laughs) No, no photos, please. No pictures, please. But they let us inside at 620. They let us inside to the queue. So that was great. And then we hung out there and then we were meeting them at seven past seven. I think we were done and the party was started. So. Oh All was- right. So it's a little after seven. Party's actually beginning officially. Yeah. And what did you do then? So the next thing we did was we went to get something to eat. And we went all the way out to Frontierland. She wanted to the sweet potato fries. So the other thing that I ended up having to do like a lot of research on for the party, and I even wrote Disney like the special diets email was, what are the ingredients for the party, for the party treats, the party exclusives to find out what is gluten free or not? And they could not tell me. They were just like, sorry, you you have to ask there. We cannot. So thank God for... All of these allergy bloggers, I think it was mouse ear memories that went and did the research and all the party treats to figure out what could be adapted to become gluten free and what was and wasn't. So that was great. So I was able to plan that out a little bit. And without that, that would have been like a lot of running around in the park, especially with a little kid, like getting in line because there's not mobile order, right? During the party. There's not. Yeah. So... You're waiting in the line and get up there and, oh, sorry, you can't have this. And let's spread out. I'm grateful that people are out there doing the work. I don't understand. I know that this year for food and wine, they have an allergy menu. And I hope maybe that's something they can do for these parties, too. But we got the sweet potato fries. That was very exciting. Delicious. 10 out of 10. She loved it. I loved it, too. Let's see. So that was like 730. There was other food at Pecos Bill, but we were full at that point. I think with the heat, we ended up not really eating as much as we planned. And I maybe always do this too, where I like write down all these snacks and stuff and then we get there and it's heavy stuff or rich and then it's not really as much. But we went and got the candy corn milkshake from Pecos Bill, which could be made and free by taking off like the little cake on top. And that was the worst thing that we had. I think actually it was broken the machine like there was no flavor when she sipped it she said there's no flavor and I was like that is such a weird grown-up critique of a drink 
<laughs> to give me. But then I said, I was like, no, there's literally no flavor. It's like just ice. It had nothing. So I feel like the machine was maybe broken, but the party felt like I didn't go back and we just tossed it. And I guess I could have gone back and been like, this isn't right, but I don't know. We were on the move on to the next thing. Mm-hmm. Um, on our way back, I don't remember what our plan was. We went and saw, we saw the cadaver dance then. And that was really cute. What time is all this? About 7.30. I, oh, my plan was to see the first parade and I really wanted to get like a really good spot where it's like you're looking down Main Street and see the castle. And I wasn't, I since it was the first parade, which is busier, I was like, I'm willing to like chill there and, and wait for that spot. So we made our way all the way from Frontierland back to Main Street and first stopped in the store and I got her the Halloween bubble wand because I was like, oh, if we're chilling here, she can play with that. That was great, as they always are. And I got the ornament and then the tote bag, the Halloween tote bag, which was clutch for just like traveling home and needing all that stuff. And then we got our spot on Main Street and we were sitting there, but there really wasn't a lot of people around us at all. And I felt like, I think, will be okay to get out. And I saw that Mickey right over there, he had like only a 10 minute wait. And I was like, all right, Rosemary, I think we can go. Do you want to go see Mickey? Because this seems like a long time. I got a popcorn too and a snack. And I was like, we can go see him. And if the spot's still open, we can come back. And if it's not, then maybe we'll just see the second parade if we really want to sit here. She said, okay. So off we went to see Mickey. And then I got a little stressed. Oh, I just gave up that really good spot and we should have just stayed put. But when we came back, it was still there. It like, took 10 minutes to see Mickey and thank him for throwing such a fantastic party. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, so then we got our spot for the first parade. And that was great. It was funny because we could see there was a stage show happening while we waited. And at first I thought we were hearing it. But then I realized it was just like the Main Street Halloween music. Because I was like, Christina Aguilera is not in this <laughs> show right now. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something though? Build the projections and stuff. So that was funny. But it's amazing to me how the sound works that it's just we're hearing totally different music. It's not far away, but they have their people who know how to do that stuff. <laughs> um, it's their thing. And so for reference, the, 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 parade, <laughs> the parade that she is waiting for was the 915 parade. So yeah. there was a little bit of time, but you're saying even an hour before it was still okay. Is that what you're saying? At 8.45 is when we finally stayed put in our spot. Okay, so that's only 30 minutes before. Yeah, only 30 minutes before we were there. It really, to me, it did not feel like crazy. And I also noticed for this parade, and maybe people always do this for their parade on Main Street, but like we were sitting down on the curb while we waited and people were standing up behind us. And then when the parade started, like the front row, everyone just stayed sitting down and let the people behind them stand. Mm Mm-hmm. Was that typical? Yeah. I love that. I was like, this is very, this is nice for everyone. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So that was the only thing is, so Rosemary was wearing the the Haunted Mansion bride veil that's like from Disney. It has blue lights and the flowers. And a cast member came over and was like, you do have to shut those lights off because they are little like wands to tell the floats where to go were the same exact color. And she was like, if you're standing right here at the end, like we do not want the floats going directly into you. So I thought that was interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, But then it was the parade. And oh my God, that was the best part of the night. That was amazing. The Headless Horseman. Oh, I guess I should back up. The Powerline Max. We saw them coming down, but they stopped. So we were in that, the circle. It kind of looks down Main Street a little bit to the right. And on then, Mickey's side, on the yeah, top. closer to Mickey, like uh-huh. on the right, looking at the castle. And Max goes to the left. So all the people, like the parade goes to the right, but he doesn't do like the end there. Mm-hmm. Just it was fine. We could see him. We missed like the dance party part. But if someone's like, they really want to dance mm-hmm. with Max, that's not the place to be because hmm. he's done at that point. But it was an awesome view to see the Headless Horseman. And that was amazing. And that was so impressive to me. I'm by no means an equestrian, but I did ride horses when I was younger. And Rosemary has too. And I just cannot imagine 
riding a, we call them worker horses, like a client, like they're so huge. You're basically in a full split when you ride a horse that big. So right away, having a horse that is trained as a, as like a puller and also can be, have a rider and do so well is phenomenal to me. Mm -hmm. And that obviously knows the route so well, obviously is like super chill, with like lights and sounds and just holding your arm. Like it's just, it's, a, it's phenomenal. And so spooky. I looked up how that used to be like, I guess the horse used to run and gallop in the parades before. But I think actually like the trot, the sound and everyone gets so quiet. Oh, I loved it. It was great. Yeah, it is cool. It, the performers in the parade were phenomenal. I was just blown away with I loved the grave diggers. I loved the pirates. They were, oh my gosh, their attitudes. They were so cool. The girl pirate, that was Rosemary's favorite. Very cool. The new, I think the only thing that I didn't love was the new Ursula float. Some of it, I'm confused with some, not confused. I'm curious with some of the villains why they are fashioned the way they are versus allowing someone to act. Like Hook and Ursula and who else? It's just like the evil queen is so good. Maleficent is so good. Who's that guy from Princess and the Frog? He's so good. You know what I mean? And I just feel like a lot's lost there when they can't emote in the same way. Mm -hmm. But that's a little quibble. I love the parade. The song, I don't know. You think it would be annoying? Nope. We were jamming to it. We still are. I think it's the best parade that's ever been at Disney World. I'm guessing. I am a lot, but I believe that. Oh, and this is the big thing, the highlight of maybe the whole trip for Rosemary happened during this parade. So she loves Oogie Boogie from Nightmare Before Christmas. I think she just likes him because he, he, to me, he's one of the scariest villains, but she thinks he looks really cute, which I guess he does. He's like chubby and, and sweet in that way. And so when he was walking by towards the end of the parade, I said, oh, my God, look, it's Oogie Boogie, like just to her, not super loud. And he came over to us and put his little hand, paw, whatever he has, out to her. And at first I was like, I don't think I'm supposed to touch you. And then he like did it again to Rosemary. And she stood up and shook his hand and hugged him. And we didn't see that happening in the parade. And she was like, he came to me. He knew that I loved him. And she was blown away. I thought she's. The magic is changing for her a little bit as she gets older. And I was curious how she would respond to the characters. But when you're there, you're just, I do it too. You're in it. That was fun to see. She's only seven. I know she's only seven, but she's really, and she has her little like baby voice. Mm. <laughs> so, but sometimes she's got her only child thing where she's, you know, I know the ways of the world. <laughs> But that was really sweet and it's really fun to see. And that's something that I love about Disney is going with her and really seeing her enjoy all the kid stuff where I feel like a lot of times as a parent, you're watching them like push and get bigger and gain independence. And at Disney, you get to watch them just lean in to the kid stuff. And that's her that's all. I would argue that she can do a little bit of both because like when she's a little bit older she can navigate on transportation by herself oh, in, a, yeah. in, in a way that is maybe safer than in a big yeah. city or something. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's a good it, it's almost like they get to try out being big and stay little. Yeah. Yeah. Which, definitely. Which is cute. No, I like thinking about that. So anyway, so after the parade, then we went all the way back to Frontierland to avoid the fireworks because she's not, she just doesn't love, she's sensitive to the noise in that way. And I thought it was interesting. And during when we were waiting for the parade at the end of the stage show, there's little fireworks. And those did not sound that loud at all from where we were sitting. And I don't know if it's because of the kind they are. But when we were in Frontierland, we were in Pecosville when they were going. It still sounded like super crazy loud to me. So I don't know if it's the type or. I know behind the castle it's louder if it's or whatever. On our way over there, we tried to see Jasmine and we got in line. And as soon as we got in line, it switched out to Aladdin and Abu. Mm -hmm. Forget it. She was like, I'm hungry. Okay, fine. Like, we'll see. Maybe on the way back, we'll see them. We got, we got to get out of here. The fireworks are starting. 
So we went to Pecos Bill and she was going to get the bowl of bones, which is gluten free. But when we got there, they were sold. It was sold. Which is a bummer. But she there's a ton of gluten free stuff there. Mexican food is easy. So she just got chips and queso. And that was fine. And I was impressed. Her attitude about that was really good, I think, because she said it's ribs. And she's like, I can get ribs anywhere. I think what she ended up being most excited about this trip was getting things that are hard for her to get out other places, like getting chicken fingers and getting French fries and that kind of stuff. Not the stuff that I also know she likes, but she can get out pretty easily because it's just naturally gluten free or usually cooked in a way that's safe for her. So that was fine. We, ch- we chilled there and we ate. And actually, we were in like the way back section of Pecos Bill. And while we were there, they were like closing off that section because it was less and less people to have people sit in another spot and not have to clean up the huge restaurant. And so the cast member came over to us and was like, oh, just leave your tray here when you're done, please, because they've already emptied out the garbage. And I was like, oh, my gosh, do you- we can move like... I don't want to make it. He was like, no, we do everything on your time. And I was like, that's very intense, but like very nice. And this was just like a theme of the entire time you were there. The cast members, it's just phenomenal. There was just every single person like above and beyond. Really, it was really wonderful. Like I can I cannot say enough. I did as many cast compliments on the app as I could while you're trying to fit it, to fit mm-hmm. all that. But just every little interaction, it's unbelievable. It's really wonderful. Um, I'm really happy to hear those reports because it has fluctuated. Sure. Sometimes it's better than others, but the reports have been mostly positive lately. Yeah, it was good. And folks seemed happy. They seemed, Mm -hmm. and I think guests and cast members, like during the party and in general, people seemed upbeat, excited. So that was really nice. So by this point, as we said that her legs were hurting and we were running out of steam a little bit at this point. And I was like, that's fine. We, we did stuff, but we'll head back and maybe let's just stop and do the Haunted Mansion before we go. And then we, we can go. That's fine. So we jumped in line for the Haunted Mansion. It was only 15 minutes. At this point, it's like 11 p.m., which seems... A lot. But like the end of the parade, waiting for the fireworks to end, eating, we're getting on the Haunted Mansion at 11. So it's pretty late. But like that night, it just goes like, yeah, we did it was a lot. lot. <laughs> well, it was really fast. So we're in line. The actors there, the ghosts were there and they were phenomenal. We were like in the back right before they let you in. So we didn't get to hear them too much. But that was great. It, it looked cool with all the, the fog and the lights. We usually skip the stretching room. I don't think that the stretching room itself bothers her. I think when everyone screams, that scares her, actually. Mm -hmm. But I always like skipping the stretching room because they bring you, like, around back. And it feels, Mm -hmm. ooh, we're getting, I don't know what you're getting to see, but it always feels like we're not supposed to be here. We did that. That was fun. And then on our way, supposedly out, we stopped finally to trick or treat at the the theater, the Fill Our Magic. We hadn't done any yet. At the beginning of the night, those lines seemed massive to me. Now, I don't know how quick they were moving, but I was like, I said to her, I was like, Rosemary, girl, I will get you candy. Like, I will, I promise. We'll get home, I'll get you a bag of candy, but I do not want to spend this party getting candy and dragging it around Magic Kingdom. And she was like, yeah, that's it's fine, I'm good. But it was the end of that. I was like, let's stop and let's get some. And that was so cute. And they're playing all the old movies and so that was really cool and then she got a second wind after the candy <laughs> she got a second wind she's can i go on the carousel again i was like yeah definitely so we hopped on the carousel and then small world was back i assume it came back earlier than that we was like oh we never did small world let's get on that we had a boat to ourselves spread out just chilling relaxing we then did trick-or-treating at pinocchio village house and then we're just, I don't know, vibing, having the bubble wand, looking at the castle, having candy. It was really nice. And then I didn't realize till we left. I was like, oh, we didn't do Jungle Cruise. We never went to Tomorrowland. We didn't even do a side of the park. But I don't know how we physically could have done any more than we did. And then mm-hmm. I was, we, we both felt 
I think after eating and having some water and just like I said, had another second wind and then just felt really nice at the end of the night. And we weren't back to the resort till 1 a.m. Long day. It was a long day. It was really long, but it was awesome. I loved the party. I think I honestly looking having this is my first party that I've ever done there. And like I said, I would prefer to get in the day before, chill and swim, and then do the party. Even just go and do the party and stay two nights. When because the next day too, you we have literally driven from the party to the airport. Oh my god. Because the flight was going out at 6 a.m. So what's the point in yeah. going right. back to the hotel? We're going to be on a flight in a few minutes anyway, or a few hours. Well. I'm so glad we did it. I'm so glad we fit it in. But I was like, I can't. And I was at one point, I was like, we're done. But we rallied. We truly finished it. Well, and normally, you know, we wouldn't suggest to someone going on like a week long trip that they plan too much on their arrival day and like it's super yeah. tiring, but you have a short trip. So it is a bit of a marathon, like a sprint, not a marathon. Yeah. So you really are trying to cram in as much as you possibly can in a, a short time. 100%. All right. So w- the next day you had a breakfast reservation. Yes. And at some point I changed those reservations to just 30 minutes, about 30 minutes later. So we went at 1030. I went back and double checked in my like photos this time because this still seems unbelievable to me. But like it must be because I took pictures. Rosemary slept until 950, which is unheard of. She's a like at 6 a.m. I'm awake kind of kid. And we were in the minivan at 1005. Like she just got up and got dressed and we left. I hope she and, brushed her teeth. I don't know. And you must have called the meeting and it showed up really quickly too. Yeah. We were also at our location because they can come into the resort. So we weren't going all the way to the front to the minivan. We were just coming outside of our building. Mm-hmm. It, was two min- it was two minutes. So yeah. She's a little kid. There's not a lot to do to get ready. Get up. Mom picked out your clothes. Put them on. Let's go. And so you were in the minivan at 10.05 for a 10.30 reservation. Yep. And it was Kate May Cafe. And that was our first time there. It was good. I'm not sure. It's gonna, I think it's going to be a one and done for us. I, I don't love a buffet. And I don't remember why I ignored that and booked this. But I guess it's just one that we haven't tried before. I wanted to be close to Epcot. It was, they brought her food from the back. So we ordered what she would like and they brought hers out. But then there was this awkward thing. I was like, I went up and got my food. She's by herself at the table, which is fine, but a little awkward. Mm -hmm. And then I had my plate and we're waiting for hers. And I don't know. It's just a buffet is not my favorite experience. We're also in the back, like by the kitchen entrance. So Mm -hmm. all the pictures I saw where it's like really light and airy and you can watch the characters as they go around. We couldn't see anything. I think also, Rosemary just wasn't super hungry yet. Like she had just woken up. We established that she's only been up for 30 minutes. Up. And I don't know. It was a little, I was, this was our hardest day. Day two was, there were some missteps here. There were some serious missteps on my part. Because the other thing, I did get Janie Plus because I had the idea to do the same thing. Like the stacking had worked so well the night before and so I did it and I got frozen and that was easy to like push forward but I quickly realized that it was so quiet at the parks that getting the lightning lanes and constantly having to push them forward to later times I had to do it like every hour because the time would just be like immediate because they were all available right which is a different problem than most people right. have. <laughs> and then I was like, this isn't, but if you don't do it, then you lose it. The, I don't know. So it was like, I was like, oh, this is annoying. And I really didn't want, it was just me and her. And she had specifically said about being on the phone a lot. And so I felt bad about that. So we ate and then I was like, do you want to go into Epcot? And she's like, no, we were both still dragging a little bit. But then we, what did we do? We walked over to the Skyliner and we took the Skyliner all the way to Hollywood Studios. And that was really nice. That was lovely. I can't believe how cool it is on the Skyliner. Like just that breeze, how that works. It was just 
It was really nice. So we just hung on the Skyliner and talked. And then we took the bus from Hollywood. It took us an hour to get back to the resort. Like it just everything on the minivans is so fast. And then we ended up waiting for our bus to all star sports. And it was like a long wait. And the one to music came. And I was like, let's just get on this one. And we did. And that was fine. I didn't really realize how the the all stars were like all right there. We could see whenever we walked to the parking lot to pick up the minivan, I was like, oh, there's music. It's right there. So then we came back on the bus. We walked back to, to our resort and came in the front and we did our we did some shopping in the gift shop there. We got a couple hats. She found a toy that she'd been wanting for a while. And then as we found the stuff that we were looking for, and I did end up getting like the Halloween souvenirs that I wanted to at the party. I was like, do you want still to go to Disney Springs? Because Disney Springs is not my favorite in the whole world. Because we got like all the stuff we were looking for and that could be more pool time. And that did it. So at that point, I canceled our Disney Springs for the next reservation at the boathouse for the next day. And in my mind, I was like, we'll still do Animal Kingdom for however long we want to do it and then come back and swim. Mm-hmm. As, as the time goes, we're just dropping stuff. <laughs> we're slowing down. We also then, after breakfast, we canceled the Teppanito reservation because, is that when we canceled it? At some point, I realized it's taking us a long time to get back. She's going to want to swim. Then it's really only so many hours in Epcot. Do we want to spend that much time in Tempanito? And we didn't. So So we ended up swimming until, let's see, we were on the bus to Epcot at 3.40. It was late. It's a perfect example, though, of pivoting based on how things are going that day. Yeah. And so now I feel a little bit like, a slave to the lightning lanes. This is when the lightning lane is and most where I have to do it. So Frozen did, that lightning lane was gone. So I couldn't push it later. And it was from 5.15 to 6.15. And I just felt, I don't know, maybe because I was like, I need to get my money's worth of the lightning lane or because it's like hard to get a Frozen lightning lane to whatever extent. It's not her favorite movie. It's not her favorite ride. I should have just let it go at this point because what she loves is Spaceship Earth. That's what she wants to do and see the characters. And I was like, but we have this frozen lightning lane and we'll do that first. So we got into Epcot. We got in, we took the bus. So we were there at the front and then it started to rain a little. And, and so I was like, okay, let's go on Spaceship Earth. It's your favorite. And we can like pop inside because it hadn't, we hadn't brought like a bunch of rain gear and it was just like a light drizzle and it was done by the time we came out. So we did that and she did her little games and then... What do we do? Then we had time. So I was like, okay, until 6.15 is the end of that lightning lane. We'll just make our way over to Norway. And we ended up getting, let's see, what did we get? Oh, we stopped for a Mickey bar because she was like, it's not really a Disney trip until we have this. And that is like an Olympic event to try to eat in the heat. I was like, Mm -hmm. oh my goodness. I'm glad I'm still packing baby wipes because she did it. But immediate melt. melt. You got to chow down immediately Mm -hmm. (laughs) and then we went to the brewing lab and got a bunch of different wings to try i got the pickle milkshake she refused to even try i don't blame her (laughs) i don't think i was like come on it's weird you have to once i realized that it was the muppets i was like oh this makes sense the muppets would make this this Mm -hmm. is exactly what the muppets would make this is hilarious I should have gotten the new, the tea one they had, but I didn't know what was in it and I couldn't understand the cast member. I was like one of those things where I asked her twice and I still couldn't understand her. And then I felt embarrassed to be like, what again? So I was just like, oh, okay, nothing. (laughs) So we tried all of those. Let's see, we got the peanut butter and jelly wings. Those were extremely peanut buttery. I don't know. That was not my favorite. I like the cardamom, the orange cardamom. That's like Chinese chicken a little bit. That tasted to me. She just loved the traditional spicy one. She, she ate up all of those. And then we went to the to the fr- for the fries. I forget what that booth is called. And we got the fry, the fry basket. Yes. And this is one of those things where she was really excited to be able to get 
fries, gluten-free. And we got the flight and she had picked up one of the little, the festival books. And there was this really funny mo- moment. She opened it up and it was the fry basket and she's showing the cat. She's like, you're in here. You're famous. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, we were in the book. We're um, famous. She can yeah, say that about every booth. No, no she just noticed them. She's like, oh, man, it's you. That's us. I got the cocktail there, which was very nice. And we got the fry basket. I should have, I don't really love like smoked things. So I should have just gotten like the malt ones and the, the sweet potato ones. I didn't realize that you could just order them separate too. But we tried them all and that was fun. We thought that the ones at Magic Kingdom, like the sweet potato fry Halloween party treat was really good until we had the fry basket ones. And those were 10 times even better. Super, super good. They're very similar, like the sweet with the sweet potato. Mm-hmm. Um, she loved it. It was also really nice that she could have the malt vinegar fries because they malt usually has gluten in it, but they're using a gluten free mix, just generally not as a adaptation or anything. And we stood right by the playground that's there. And this is, again, one of those things. She was just like, Can I go on the playground? And the playground was like, We got to go. It's the lightning. And then I was like, Oh my God. Yes, go on the playground. And so she played for like 10 minutes or whatever. And came over and pop a fry in her mouth and run back over. And it was whenever we slow down and stop, which is what I said originally, is, oh, that's what we should be doing. So I just have to, I feel like sometimes you get caught up in it in the moment, like what you should do or supposed to do versus what you even want to do, right? Yeah. And I, it's so, because of the planning involved, it's very easy to have a checklist and like, this is what we're going to do in this order. And it's this reservations book. It lends itself to being very, type yeah. like that yeah so that was fine and that was fun and so then we went to frozen lake at six and the lightning lane ended at six fifteen, and we got in and that was one of those it was still a long line when we first got in the lightning lane it was totally stopped and then they started letting people through i don't know exactly how long we were in there but now rosemary had rode that when she was five and she didn't like it then. She felt like the drop was too much. But she said this time she wanted to do it. But I think she forgot what was involved. And we got really wet. We were mm. in the which surprised her. She forgot that there was a drop. She just thought we went backwards. So got off the ride. She was very upset. <laughs> It's, yeah. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I rushed you through all these things that you really wanted to do. This thing that now you were scared of, and didn't enjoy. So I was like, OK, we got to make this better. You so got we- an idea, mom. <laughs> Be your parent. <laughs> we should have gone back. The other thing, it's so big. It's so big. It's Be just your like- birth? No, the park. Oh, Epcot. Uh, yeah. Okay. Huge. You're right. Epcot is huge. Especially anywhere in the World Showcase to anywhere in the no, you know, front of the park. So that's another. I feel like it should be two days. Like you do this part and then you do this part. So we got out and she's like, I just want to see characters. But all the characters were gone at that mm-hmm. point. It's over. So I was like, oh, no. So we did face paint. And she sat in the chair and got some beautiful flowers. And that we turned it around. We turned around, we felt better. And then we went and played the bongo drums in that weird mid world showcase area. And that was refreshment outpost. Yes. Yeah. Africa. And I asked her about some treats and she was no. And honestly, at this point, my stomach started bothering me. I don't know if it was just eating how we'd been eating the past day and a half at this point. The heat, it was really. It was hot. It was really hot. And so we're both like tired. So we went to the Japan store, which was very exciting to the Tokyo. And she was very excited about that. She got that ridiculous Gudetama, the egg. She was very excited to see him there. And so we spent some time in there. And then we were just kind of hurting and hot. And we got on the Skyliner to head back to the resort. So I I just... I messed this day up, but it was okay. It's okay. <laughs> Wait, you said you got on the Skyliner to head back to your resort. What do you mean? Yes. So we got on the Skyliner. We went to the Riviera because, well, we were in the World Showcase and we were close 
to France, or the where you exit the internet. And I was like, "How? What is the quickest way? Out? Get us out of here!" And so we got on the Skyliner because the Skyliner is nice. And then we got a minivan from the Riviera. That is an interesting approach. We usually go to the beach club and then call a car from there, but it does take about 10 minutes. So if you're right there at the Skyliner, maybe it's less of a walk. Yeah. Because when I talked to, I talked to one of the cast members, I was like, what do you think is the easiest way for a minute? Where can we get one? And he said, the beach club is like, but you're at the back and you have to go through. So I was like, "Mm, the Skyliner is a nice ride too. Like we, it was also just to be able to do that. Again, yeah, you guys like that. Yeah. So that's what we did. And then and then again, it was like the second win thing. Like she went to the arcade. We did a long night swim and then she was hungry again. So we got mac and cheese from the resort cafeteria and it came with sides like the fries and stuff. And I wasn't sure. I was like, I don't know Rosemary, if, the, if you can get the fries here. I'm just going to like put in the apple slices you don't really need fries with your giant mac and cheese and i'll ask when i pick this up because i was doing mobile order so the chef brings out everything when you have an allergy Mm -hmm. the chef brings it out and i said just for the for future is could we get the fries here are they gluten-free and they were like oh my gosh just wait here three minutes i'll make you some right now and they made us this like huge plate of fries to go with it i was so impressed with all-star sports i am that was the biggest surprise and learning of of this trip i thought it looked super cute i really love all like the old mickey retro style stuff so that's the art everywhere and there was just so much like they gave the pool inflatables i know that they have the games at all the resorts but this just seemed a little bit like they had them more or maybe more involved it was great i was impressed with the cafeteria food i had a great like mozzarella chicken sandwich that was delicious and everyone was super nice and our room was fantastic i was we loved it and we made a joke when we first got there and i saw that we were in the football section and i was like, oh like surfing is cool like, i'm not sporty at all so i just made a joke i was like oh rosemary they put us in the football section because we're so tough we're like football players and she's a ballerina literally we were just like so that was our joke we had a ball it was wonderful we loved the resort and it was another late night i just let her swim and swim yeah, mm-hmm. and I think we don't just like any of the resorts. And yeah. I think everything's just better for different reasons, different people. And it's exactly what you said. It's fun, colorful. There's lots of stuff going on. Yeah. And like the food court situation is often good for people with young kids. So yeah. it just gets your after. But it is an all-star sports was the last one of the last resorts I ever stayed in because like you, not a sporty person. Yeah. Well, it's fun. It was super fun. I really loved it. Everything's larger than life. Yeah. She loved that field, the, fo- the football field with the helmets. Mm-hmm. At the end of the night, she would just run up and down and they could do cartwheels. And it yeah. was, and same thing, every cast member that we worked to was phenomenal, went, ran into was phenomenal. The chef there, they are only there for a couple of days and then they remembered us mm-hmm. uh, the next time. Oh, it's you. I just, I thought it was you when you put the order. And I was like, oh my gosh, she's just so nice. I have heard from customers that worked at the resorts before that they love the value resorts the most because they feel like they can be the most helpful. Mm. Because if you go to a resort that is like a villa resort or it has a villa resort attached to it, people there feel like they know what they're doing. They don't need help. Customers don't feel like they're as useful. So maybe they're just more involved and used to helping guests. Yeah. And I did notice something that you've said on the podcast before of like the summer crowds because we haven't been we've been in march and may which is maybe getting into it but school is still on session and in january and it did seem like the guest crowd was very different as far as i don't know like i said the genie plus it was just available i felt like maybe people weren't mobile ordering as much or doing genie plus as much or just not as strategizing so that was interesting it It is very interesting if you go in the summer or on a major holiday, like Easter or Christmas. I feel like it can be that way. Yeah. Because people are going, they don't necessarily know if it's going to be busy or not. They're just wasting on school schedules. Yeah. And they're not planning and studying. Yeah. So. But that works to your advantage. It did. It did. A couple like little possibly could have been rough patches in the day. 
but a rough patch at Disney is is nothing. I and I pressure don't waste your time. And the truth is, when I look back, we didn't because we were together and we were eating stuff we liked and we were laughing like maniacs. Our time was not wasted. We were having fun. Yeah. But it can be hard when you've already paid for things to feel like, oh, I got to do that. I, I totally get it. It's hard. <laughs> it, it's hard to balance. It. And Dizzy causes a lot of this. So I'm putting part of that on them. The next day, did you end up at Animal Kingdom? Yeah, we did. So I, we were on the bus to Animal Kingdom at 9.05. I have written down. We did not rope drop it. I wasn't too worried about doing that. I had, because of my Epcot experience, I originally did not get Genie Plus. But you'll see that changed shortly after, after we got there. So we, we were lucky we walked up and the Animal Kingdom bus was there. We hopped right on. We headed straight back to Africa to do the safari because I like to do that in the early morning. I just feel like more of the animals are out and stuff and to do the trail. And both the safari and the trail were closed. So I don't know what was going on. I'd be very curious to know that something that affected both of them. The mm. I know. And they were just like so many people were there. Like a lot of people do the safari mm -hmm. first and people were just like coming back in like droves. And so I was like, oh boy. And at that point, I was like, and I, we waited a minute and looked and I knew he didn't want to spend like the whole day there. At that point, I got Genie Plus and got the Safari and it turned into an anytime because I was like, all of these people are going to come back and do the Safari and this is like top of our list. So I'm just going to do it. Did you go to Starbucks at that time by chance? We did. We did first, we did face painting again. That was the new thing for this trip. She was like, I need to be a cheetah when I'm here all day. And so we did it. We did the face painting again. She looked great. We did not make it that long. It is hot. It is real hot at this time of year. If you're looking for a deal kind of thing to do, this is not it because it doesn't last too long. But we got some really cute pictures and she felt really cool. But then by lunchtime, we were, she was like, wipe it off. <laughs> I'm done. It was it was running, but after that we went to the Starbucks, and she got donuts, gluten free donuts, and they were so yummy. On I think it was one of the gluten free Disney groups. I was like, here's all the food that we had when the donuts were so good. Oh, it's they have them at these grocery stores. I'm just like, that's not the same. You have them out and at Disney and at Animal Kingdom and Starbucks and Starbucks. So Starbucks, if Starbucks is listening. Please put these in your stores. I will personally buy so many. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so those are good. I got a little drink. I got my little dragon drink. And then where do we go? Oh, she said, the little Disney planner that she is, she's like, Dino Land's not going to be here that much longer. So we should go over there. And I was Rosemary, like. Mary, you were on top of it. I was like, let's go. And so we went to Dino Land. And let me tell you, did I write when we did? We did the Nemo show at some point. When did we do that? After Dino Land. We went to Dino Land. And let me tell you, we played those games. Now that will suck you in financially. And financially. I it's stacked against you. The odds are not on your in your favor. I got sucked in. I was like, we're going again. We're gonna do we're gonna do this. I do think they should separate the adults and the children. Cause you're sitting there and you're it's three little girls ready to go and then someone's dad walks up to play the whack a dinosaur or whatever and it's like, sir please yes wait children. your turn let the children <laughs> fight amongst themselves yeah you must feel good about yourself competing against a five-year-old <laughs> come on but that was interesting so at one point for the ski ball one there's a few that you don't have to wait for other people to play and you can just do like against yourself if you get it, you don't. And then there's a, some that you need like to have competitors. And so that was one where she needed someone to go against her. And we'd already done it once and we were waiting. And I was like, I'll go. It'll be me and you. And then we'll get something. And but I played as hard as I could. And let me tell you, she beat me. She beat me fair and square. I was not good at that. 
at that game at all. I came in all confident. No. So she won her little Minnie Mouse. But that was super fun. So we did that. And then from there, we caught the 11 o'clock Nemo show. You saw the show? Yeah. That must have been. Yeah. What do you think of the show? Oh, my gosh. It was beautiful. It was gorgeous. The I love that kind of style of show where I guess they're doing this a lot like Lion King or War Horse was where the puppeteers are present and part of it. And I just thought it was it was so gorgeous and so phenomenal. And again, the performers, I'm extremely impressed. And the bubbles, like it was great. We had a ball. And so then we came out of there and I had joined the walk up list for Nomad Lounge. And by 1215, we were sitting outside of Nomad Lounge. With a coffee. And you were talking to us about the gluten-free churros here. Yes. Those were phenomenal. She was extremely excited about those. And the vanilla sauce that comes with them. I like the strawberry. Is it strawberry guava? I'm not sure. I think if they had given her like a spoon and a big bowl, of that sauce, she just would have eaten it. So that was amazing. They were so yummy. And everything on that menu, our server told me, could be made gluten-free, except their mac and cheese. And he was super nice. She still was a cheetah at this point. And he came over and he was like, oh, my God, I love your face paint. I'm getting my face painted soon. I'm going to Vegas to see Beyonce's concert. And he was bald. He's like, my whole head is going to be a disco ball. Because yeah. you got to wear silver. Really cool. Cool. <laughs> when you go to Beyonce concert, you got to wear silver. You got it. Yeah. And uh, we were like, that's amazing. Just, Your face paint is good. I'm going to be a disco ball all here having a good time. And we were outside. And at first I was like, oh, it, again, it was hot. And I was like, oh, we, I didn't want to wait longer to be inside. It's fine. But then all the flotillas came by. Mm -hmm. That was so nice. That was so fun. We sat there for a long time. So um, were you seated outside then? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I didn't. At first, I was going to ask, well, wait for inside just because of the heat. But when they sat us outside, I was like, mm, it's fine. And I'm so glad I did because I had a couple drinks. I got the Cuban sliders. I got them with gluten free buns, which were all right, just in case like she wanted some bites. She ended up not, she ended up just eating churros. So that was fine. And the yucca fries, it was wonderful. It was so peaceful and so relaxing. And we just talked and just the floats go by. And it was wonderful. It was great. And then after that, we did the safari. It was back open. We had the anytime pass. That was it, too. We were at No Lounge for a long time. <laughs> it's easy to do. Yeah. We were at No Lounge for a long time. We got on the safari at two. This was, we've been to Animal Kingdom before. We, we usually do the safari twice whenever we go to Animal Kingdom. This was probably like it was the middle of a hot day and I feel so a lot of the animals weren't out. And also I feel because they had been closed so long that they were like really rushing through where previously when I've been on, if you're passing like the giraffes right there, they stop and they didn't stop once. It was just like, go, go, go. And Rosemary and I even came to make a joke. Oh, there's an animal, but it's... And I feel bad for people. That's, this is it. This is the first time. But it was fine. It was, I think it's just the time of day with, with those creatures. And so after that, we, we got some of the corn and frozen lemonade. And refreshed. We did more bongo drumming. And she bought a little bongo drum. Bongo drums were a big part of this trip. We saw Kevin, which is always exciting, always confusing about what you are allowed to do with Kevin or not. There's always, I feel like I'm not quite doing the right thing because they're like, keep it moving, Kevin. Can you take a pic? Can you touch Kevin? Can you, it's, I always feel like I'm stumbling there a little bit. That was I think great. That is, I think that is hard with any of the roaming characters. Yeah. Because the kind of the point of roaming is not to form lines. But then also, how do you interact while running? The strange yeah. concept. Yeah, it was great. I suppose mm -hmm. like, that Kevin's not eating chocolate anymore. That's what they, they told us. She's eating healthier. <laughs> we, love, we love that for Kevin. I love that they have those lines ready, those explanations. Yeah. <laughs> and then we did the bird show. It was the last one of the day. And that was really funny because 
the macaws that do the fly over the tree of life, they were all there. And they were just like the kind of like the shtick of the bird show was like, oh, this is not going how we planned. But they were like, this is really not going how we planned. Like all of these macaws are here hanging out. And they were really loud. And that was really funny and fun to see. And then we did a lightning lane to meet Minnie and Mickey. Since you had Genie Plus. We had Genie Plus. And I'm glad we had that because that that has been a long wait in the past. And I, it's so nice to meet the characters together. Like their interactions, I just feel like it's so fun to see. And that was really, it was really sweet. That was one of the best character interactions of the couple days, seeing Minnie and Mickey there. We did a little more shopping. We got the little keychains that they have now that are like, the letter, like I got an A for Elise and it's Ariel and she got an R and it's Rapunzel, little matchy keychains. And then we were walking to the bus at 4.45 and 15 minutes later, I, we were back at the resort. You're back. That was, a, back. that was a pretty good day at Animal Kingdom, it sounds like. Yeah, it was a great day. It was a really good day at Animal Kingdom. I love Animal Kingdom. I think it's so pretty and relaxing. And then swimming, arcade. I should say that we had an arcade card from our last trip. I don't know how much I put on that card, but it didn't run out. I think that the arcade prices are very good at Disney. And a couple times, people who are leaving, twice this happened, someone gave Rosemary a card with like their leftover points. So we did not buy any arcade while we were there this time. Free entertainment. Yeah. So that was super fun. And then at the pool this time... Rosemary made a friend from the United Kingdom and they, it's little Ella from the UK. They were there for two weeks and she went up to her and they started playing. They played for three hours in the pool. So by the end of their time, we exchanged addresses and they're going to be pen pals, which is so exciting. This is a lot of UK guests go this time of year. So yeah. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. It was just really sweet. She was eight, Rosemary seven. They had a ball together. And they were actually, at one point, the girls were sitting there and they're like, do you want to come back next summer and meet up? And Ella's mom was like, it is very expensive for us. But they were just like, maybe two years. Did, was Ella an only child? No, she had some older siblings who were also very sweet. She was there with her mom and dad and another grown up and older siblings so they had a big group but oh my gosh that was so fun yeah Cute. that was an unexpected maybe you're gonna talk to her maybe this is gonna be a friend you know maybe yeah. you'll go to- that's sweet they yeah. go to disneyland paris together that would be good <laughs> and rosemary ordered chicken tenders and french fries and all this stuff and when she first saw them she was worried i think that the chicken tenders are going to be like grainy because a lot of fried stuff gluten freeze made with cornmeal She said that they were really good. And that was that. That was that. The next day was your departure day. How did that go? It went great. So I am so glad because originally I'm a little bit of an introvert. The only thing I love more than a good plan is a canceled plan. And I was like, you know what? Maybe we'll sleep in. We've got to pack up and we won't do Port Orleans French Quarter. She's like, no, I really want beignets. So I was like, okay, I can pull it together. We can do it. So is Rosemary an extrovert? (laughs) Yeah. I'm fascinated by the dynamics between different parent-child, like extroverted parent, yeah. introverted child, or vice versa. Yeah, she definitely is. So I was like, I'm going to get this girl her beignets. We're going to do it. And so let's see. We were at Port Orleans French Quarter at 745 because we needed to be picked up at 9 to go to the airport. I'm so glad we did it. It was so nice. We had another minivan. We had amazing minivan drivers. Our favorite was Sam. Shout out Sam. She was our minivan driver on the first day. So cool from all over the country and the world. Someone from Australia. Sam is from Jersey. They have they are, they're some of the best cast members. They have the best knowledge. And I told, I said one of them, I said, you really know the most out of your, you minivan drivers know everything. So many of us, I'm sure, has worked in different capacities in the parks mm-hmm. before. So he was in guest relations and for I think he said 15 or 17 years and is retired and does this a couple days a week so he can bring his grandson down whenever one is just like 
How great is that? Mm-hmm. They're so yeah. clean, the cartoons. Oh, I will say, so Rosemary, she's seven, and at home, she rides in a booster seat, and, and away we go. They had a backless booster. And in the minivan, I originally asked for them to put the booster in, but what they have for the minivans is like a, a convertible, right? So that they can do all kind, whatever size, age, child. And so the first time she was in the booster, it was like a car seat. And she was like, mom, I don't want to be in this. And so for the next trips, I let her just sit in the seat. I felt like we're in Disney World. We're not like on the highway, right? When she's older. So I, we didn't end up using the boosters in the minivan after that. She was like, come on. <laughs> I'm not a baby. <laughs> so... Do you want to say anything else about the beignets at Port Orleans Stretch Quarter? You loved them. Oh, yes. They were so good. They're not Mickey shapes. They can't do that. I would say that they're a little denser than regular beignets and a little like maybe nuttier. I really enjoyed it. She did too. She ate so much. She ate a bunch. And it was just a really nice. We had, and it's so pretty there. And, and then away we go. Picked us up again. Quick, easy nice and when we were in when we got to orlando excuse me when we got to mco i was very glad to have tsa pre-check on the way back even pre-check was like back that was really good it was very busy there but we made it home we were home by 2 30 and there you go that's us yeah (laughs) that's a fun little quick trip but i think that you highlight the beauty of doing parent-child trips like alone because you yeah. you were able to like pivot and do things that she wanted and it's, yeah. it's different it's been a lot of time one-on-one time together yeah. yeah it was it was awesome I was so happy to do it and I think one of the biggest things so we I use the bounce back deal to schedule our next trip I called oh, so that, you- that was gonna be one of my questions but I have for- I keep forgetting to ask about bounce backs because they're relatively new I called and and did it. And actually, we are... So we're going to go back in May with my whole family, with my husband too. And and so we are going to stay at an all-star again. We were originally going to stay at Caribbean Beach. And I just told him, I was like, she had a ball. It was really nice. And it saved us $1,000. That's significant. I, like, I feel the like bounce, the, the bounce really, back did? No. Bounce back, I would say, gave us like a free day. If you mm-hmm. worked out, we could. It was about that much difference within the resort than just booking without it. But booking an All Star versus Caribbean Beach was a thousand dollar difference for the exact same week. I feel like that's really significant. That's it a is. lot of min- that's a lot of minivan rides. That's a lot of beignets. Yeah. Well, so, are you doing sports or a different one? Sports was sold out, which makes me a little nervous that there's something like a like a dance competition group there or something. Yeah. Um, what date? What dates? In, did you say May 6th? Yeah. Early May is when they have their big cheer competitions. Yeah. So that's probably, so that's what's going on there. We're staying at movies. You wouldn't want to be there with yeah. them because they use it as practice. So it's very much there. Yeah. That football field that she ran down, it'll be full of cheerleaders. <laughs> Which she actually probably would love. Yeah. It's just very loud. Like, big girls. It's and very girls. loud. Because it's their place, so it can yeah, be sure. quite loud. So, which all star are you at? Did you say movies? Yeah, I'm gonna do movies. So yeah. I like movies too. The theming yeah. of there, it's really fun. Again, though, it's the really large, colorful icons. The, the food court is movies themed with the lights, just like a movie yeah. theater. I think it's gonna be well. I think the only thing that is gonna be trickier, and again, it's just three of us. We have a small family, but when Rosemary and I were there, we just slept in one bed and we left the table down mm-hmm. the whole time, the, the bed table. And so we could have our stuff like left out on it. So I know that's going to be like, we're going to have to clear the table off or just keep it clear. Probably we'll think or about just that. leave it down. Yeah. To not even be tempted. No, yeah, it's <laughs> like a regular hotel room. You just yeah. have two beds. So that it, I can imagine if you have with a larger family that it could be a little tight but like really it was it was great we're fine i also sometimes we live in a small apartment so sometimes if we go to a hotel and it's really i don't want to stay in, in a hotel that's bigger than where i live that feels <laughs> so we can do small spaces that's fine you're conditioned for this yes yeah 
<laughs> All right. That sounds like a really good trip. And yeah. I appreciate you taking the time to share with us. I hope you all have a great time in May. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. This was really fun to do. And it really helped me look back and look at the times, how long it really takes to travel places. I feel like I haven't paid that close attention to or for waiting in line. So that was really useful. So thank you. Yes, thank you. I hope you enjoyed my chat with Elise and maybe learned a thing or two along the way. I think that will wrap up this episode of WW Prep to Go. For more information on this episode, please check the show notes in your podcast app or head to the website www.prepschool.com. Click on podcast at the top, scroll down to episode 373. Until next time, I will see you on the site. One in four car batteries is weak and needs to be replaced. Let our professional parts people test your battery for free at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, oh. 